Have a seat, please. Have a seat. Have a seat. It's nice to see you all. The um, oil from Melbourne. I can't believe it. <laughs> Anybody left there in Melbourne? Uh, uh, anyhow, we are so welcome, and uh, I'm happy to see you all. And um, of course, I can see some faces from Sydney, but the faces not only from Melbourne. Yeah. But anyhow, I, I just want to ask uh, how many of those here uh, came from last night? Hands up for those who were here from last night. Uh, do you know why I'm asking this question? Do you have any idea? And how many of those who have been here sleeping overnight here at the monastery came this morning at the Tesbah? How many? Hands up. Only one Abuna, only one Abuna, and maybe uh, yeah, another Tasoni and and Naomi and uh, and uh, uh, was Esther was it Esther? Naomi and who? And Demiana and Naomi. Yeah, that's all. Where is the rest? <sighs> Are you coming to sleep here? It looks like you it, it looks like you don't have any beds at home. It's, it's a big shame, I'm telling you, big shame for those who come to the monastery and then they don't attend the Tazbah. Big shame, I'm telling you. We don't come to the monastery only to attend Masses. No. Because you do at attend Masses in your churches there. There's no problem there. And I know you attend lots of Masses. That's nice. But in the monastery, number one, is to attend Tazbiha. And I'm Shai's Kursi. Thank you very much. Uh, number one is when you are in the monastery, any monastery, you attend the Tazbiha. Because this is the best experience you can have in your life. And um, the most beautiful thing is when you come to church and you ask for nothing, just to stand there and praise God. That's the most beautiful thing. During the Mass, you ask for a lot of things. 
But when you come to the tasbiha, you ask for nothing. You just praise God. And this is beautiful. That's, that's why we should learn that, you know, when we stand before God, not only asking for things, but you are here to glorify Him. Anyhow, this is uh, one point. Another point is that um, you are being given a special permission, by the way, to come today to the monastery, so to attend this beautiful occasion of the first Mass of Abuna Moses. Because we are supposed to be closing. We close during the, the uh, Great Lent fast. So we can, we can have some quiet time. But um, again, Melbourne has to always change things. But anyhow, just because of Abu Namusa, uh, we, uh, we opened the monastery today for you all, so you can come. But from tomorrow, back to close. So we're going to be closing tomorrow, inshallah. During Great Lent, we always close the monastery. But um, usually, usually, because of the people always, you know, keep nagging and nagging, we would like to come to the monastery during fasting. I told them, listen, I will let you go, uh, I will let you come the first two weeks of the fast. So I let the first two weeks, um, uh, people can come, but after that we close. So actually, last Sunday was the last chance uh, for uh, opening the most monastery. So anyhow, so um, lucky that you are here with us. And I'm happy to see you all. Uh, I hope Abuna Musa does a good job today. And I hope the other Abuna Musa, our Abuna Musa, does a good job too, I hope. But anyhow, uh, uh, good luck for both of them. Uh, actually, we had great time, Abuna, uh, Abuna Michael and Abuna James done very well, and they passed <laughs> uh, 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 on their first mass. And uh, actually, they are they're perfect, they're really good. Uh, what is uh, Abuna Michael is here? Yeah. Where is Abuna James? He's, he's hiding there somewhere. So both are great, and I'm sure Abuna. Moses will do the best command, inshallah. And um, um, actually, I, um, I consider <coughs> the fathers uh, who are here with us, you know, uh, they are really lucky that um, they'll be serving with great fathers, their senior fathers. I'm sure um, uh, Abuna Moses will be very happy to uh, serve it was Abuna Daniel, Abuna Mark, Abuna, um, Abuna Bastavros, Abuna Bastavros, Abuna Rafael, Abuna John, so, huh? Abuna Andrew, and the list is going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure he's so lucky to be there with you. <laughs> now? Abuna Suriel, come in. Ayo, Abuna? Abuna John. Jonathan, Jonathan, yes, Abuna Jonathan. The beautiful fathers, beautiful fathers. So may God bless you all. And uh, I really love to see you working together with harmony, with one mind, one heart, and um, uh, have that unity together. It's very important. Um, today, have you, have you um, listened to the gospel of today? Did you listen carefully? It was from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 18, about that servant who didn't forgive his maidservant of his debt, debt to be paid, yani. he didn't. Although that servant himself was in, in debt to pay to his master, how much? Ten thousand dollars, ten thousand denarii or whatever. So the master brought that servant. He said to him, "Listen, you have to pay me ten thousand denarii." Where could he get ten thousand denarii from? He's just a, a servant. 
So he start to bleed and then start to uh, beg him and ask him for, you know, to, to be, uh, uh, a, yeah, he, they can wait for him and, um, and he can pay it later on. The master said, no, you have to, um, you have to pay it or you and your wife and your kids are going to be sold as slaves so you can pay, so you can pay the debt. Otherwise, you're going to be chucked into prison. That servant started screaming and, and crying and, and, uh, and, and bleeding to his master. And even the other, other um, servants start to, you know, to ask the master to forgive him. At last, the master had compassion over him. And he said, okay, I forgive you. Is that the end of the story? That's not the end of the story. That servant, I call him that wicked servant, who went out and he found another servant, his, his maid servant, or a servant, you know, one of his friends. He said to him, hey, come, come here. Do you forget that you're supposed to pay me 100 denarii? He said, no, I didn't forget, but I'm sorry, I can't, I can't pay it. He said, what? What are you talking about? You have to pay it. So he started to bleed and ask for, you know, for compassion and ask for forgiveness. He said, no way. You have to pay me the hundred denarii. And then he said to him, listen, if you don't pay me, you and your wife and your kids are going to be chucked into prison until you pay me. What do you call this? What do you call this? You know, this is stories we read to you. It is not just for, you know, to, for, to make fun or to entertain you. These stories are from life. So we can learn from it. What can we learn from this story? Beautiful story. Wonderful. A master who forgave his servant 10,000. And that servant can't, can't forgive his friend 100 denarii. So how, what do you call that? What does this servant deserve? عايز قطع رقبة مش كده؟ عايز قطع رقبة وقطع لسان كمان لسان ورقبة ويخلص ونستريح منه You know what? It is me and you who are the same like this servant that نحتاج قطع رقبة وقطع لسان You know why? Because we don't forget and we don't forgive others Although my Lord, he forgives a lot. And he forgets a lot. But we are not willing to forgive or to forget. Which is very bad. Very bad. So, what we learn from this, especially during these days, great Lent, fast. We are not here, you know, fasting because, uh, you know, I'm not going to eat... Um, uh, hamburger or, or, or cheese or uh, mortadella, I'm eating full and ta'amaya. So what? It's a big deal. And don't call yourself fasting because you're eating this stuff and you are changing food. That's not a big deal. But what's important? What's happening in your heart? Are you forgiving others? Are you forgetting what others did to you? as what God did for you, or you don't. That's what matters. How much you are willing to forgive and to forget? Only as much as what God did to you. Don't, for, don't ever forget that, what, what he did for you. Because once you forget what God did to you, then of course you're going to be uh, very tough and very rough with others. But when you think, and always keep it in front of your eyes what you have done horrible things in front of God and breaking his rules and commandments 
and he is still being patient with you. The more you know that, the more you realize that, the more you will be able to forgive and to forget. But the more you forget that, you're not going to forgive and forget others. So let us learn, please. Let us learn from this very simple, very beautiful story. Very good example of what the Lord is doing to us and what we should do to others. God bless you and be with you and support you so you can do the right thing. That's one thing. Is that um, another point is this is about to the fathers, to the priests. To the priests. Uh, of course, you know, I'd like to say a lot to all the fathers, the, the priests, whether new or old, that um, be careful and be aware of the offenses. Offenses. I any offenses? Offenses, yeah, al asara. Al asara. How to be careful not to offend anyone, which is not going to be easy. But we need to check with ourselves. What am I saying? What am I doing with my people in front of everybody? Yes, we as priests or as bishops, we are in the front of everybody. People are looking at us, expecting good things, good behavior, good manners. But if you are not careful, then we can do something wrong, whether aware or not aware, which is could of offend someone. You know, um, some of our people are very sensitive. Um, they don't accept any kind of, um, what do you call it, um, uh, uh, complaining or, um, or, or, or you're telling off of something wrong they have done. Criticism. Huh? Criticism. Criticism, thank you. They don't like criticism as if they are angels coming down from heaven. They don't do any mistakes, which is silly and dumb. Because we do, we do mistakes and you need to be fixed. You need to be fixed. And I, me personally, I am very uh, yani, sensitive about that. You know, I like things to be done right. It has to be done right, it has to be perfect. I don't like the, the shamamsa when they come to the monastery and they start begging for a tonia, which is dumb and silly. And then I tell them off. They get upset. Salam. You are already yani, a careless person. And when I tell you off, you start to get soaking and and shard of a. Uh, we get upset, and you say, "I'm not going to come again." Well, it is your problem. It is your problem. Why don't you be organized? And I daiman baul al shamas al adil. Al shamas al adil yigi u maatun yetu. Or even if we give him a tonia, after the mass, he chuck it off and he chuck it anywhere. He, he dump it anywhere, as if he don't care. Because it is not his, which is silly. So when I tell him off, they get upset. Assalam. If a home already mistaken, and they still get upset. Sorry. Be careful. Well, I have to be careful of how I say it and when to say it. And, um, and always to be fair. Actually, in, in my system, in my system, I always warn people. I warn them once, twice, three, five times. After that, alamin ala tul. Tach, tach, because I warned you. But to keep on, you know, being silly and dumb and, and, uh, and careless and hopeless. You get my point? So anyhow, I just want to say it. in general, be careful of the offenses. We should do the right thing, but at the same time, we have to do it with passion. And, um, and, and, and um, after we 
teach people after we, you know, we inform them, educate them, warn them, and then give the slaps back. Now, in the case of Abuna Moses, uh, I want to tell him, be careful because you're not, going to, you're not only going to serve with Coptic people, because when you do, your, when you go to Solomon Island, you're going to deal with people who have no idea about the Coptic Church. So I have to start with them from the scratch. They have to be very patient, and they have to, you know, expect them knowing nothing. So um, be patient. Um, um, and wait for them, and teach them, and inform them, and use all the techniques uh, in how to reach them, and how you reach their hearts, and, uh, and teach them about how to love God, and how to be closer to Him, and how to love the church, how to love the hymns, and how to love being in church for the Holy Communions, and so on. So, anyhow, I, I don't want to talk too much about that issue, but I just want to say to you, and I'm telling myself also, be careful of the offenses. May God give us the wisdom and give us the understanding of how to talk and when to talk and, um, and where to talk. And if you want to tell somebody off, you know, how and when and where. Um, Today, I have another beautiful occasion. Um, we're having a new, um, a, a new chap. Um, he is from Brisbane, come. Uh, this short guy. <laughs> um, this is called Mina. Mina, come down here. Um, Mina uh, Khalil, he is from Brisbane. I have known Mina more than, what, 20 years? Yeah, more than 20 years. Um, he is one of the deacons there. And um, he is a very good friend of uh, our Abu Musa here. Um, he wants to join the monastery. So I am uh, giving him a chance today. So today I'm going to uh, dress him with the blue. Could you bring that? Um, I, will, I will dress him with the blue blue dress, and this is KG1. <laughs> He's going to be a KG1, um, starting uh, at the monastery, inshallah. And uh, I don't know how long he'll be staying in this blue. It depends how serious he is. I can keep him for 10 years and, uh, in blue. It depends on how he is going to behave and how he's going to, um, you know, work. So anyhow, uh, I would like to say to Mina, uh, congratulations for starting or putting your foot on the first step of becoming a monk. Now, it depends how serious you are and how committed you are. The more you are serious, the more you are committed, the more you will be successful in your spiritual life and in your um, monastic life. Now, when, when we ask Mina why you come to the monastery, or when you ask any monk why you want to come to the monastery, the first thing they will say what? Because I want to live with Christ. Beautiful answer, isn't it? But do you prove that? Do you mean that? Well, you have to prove it then. You prove it to me that you are coming to the monastery because you want to live with Christ. Prove that. So I'm telling you from now on, if you want to live with Christ here in the monastery, then number one is to mind your own business. Mind your own business. So when you are in the monastery, you have to worry about nothing. Only about yourself. All you are, you, you are supposed to do. You don't worry about what others are doing or not doing. It's not your business. You are here in the monastery so you can practice and come closer. You have all the chances here to love God and to be closer. But if you don't do it right, sorry, you're going to, have, you're going to have the kick, kick off or kick out or whatever. So here again, mind your own business means what? 
you were supposed to come to church for prayer, right? Even if nobody else is coming to the church, you come. You come first. Even if nobody is fasting, you fast. Even if nobody is uh, obeying the rules, you obey the rules. You do the right thing, regardless what others are doing or not doing. It's not your business. Your own business is what? Is to do the right thing, is to keep your prayers, is to do what be, you've been asked to do, and you're going to eat whatever you've been given to, you get dressed what you've been given to, that's it. You worry about nothing. And don't, don't look at other Abuna, why he has this dress and I don't have. Why Abuna has this type of cell I don't have. Why you give him um, Sharif A, you don't give me. This is not your business. You just mind your own business. Your own business. You don't care about anything else. You don't worry about anything else. Do I make sense? Am I speaking in good language, you understand? I hope. Um, so here again, um, I want to say congratulations to uh, Mina. Um, still gonna keep the name Mina for a while. I don't know how, for how long, but anyhow. And, um, and don't expect anything from me. Don't think that uh, one day you're going, you're going to become a priest. Forget about that. No priesthood in, in the monastery here. Huh? Um, I'm not going to promise you to give you a car or to give you, um, you know, uh, uh, something expensive. Don't have any dreams, you know, like this at all. You are here only to, to do what? To Aish al Messiah. That's all what you have. You should have in your mind. Don't have any other expectations. I'm telling you. Not only you, even all the fathers, all the monks here, or the future monks. That's what they should put in their mind. If you're coming to the monastery to become a monk, then you, you mind your own business. You don't worry about anybody else or what others have and you don't have or what you could have in the future. Sorry. I hope this is clear to you and to everybody, and especially those who are you know, interested in joining a monastery. Think about it hundred times before you come okay so it's a good chance today I um, I would like to address me and that um, let's do this one first and then we we'll do something else in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit one God I mean blessed be his only begotten Son Sorry, blessed be the Father, the Pantocrator, I mean. Blessed be his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, I mean. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Amen. Amen.
Before I forget, I would like to say thank you very much to all the Tassonis, all the Tassonat, um, to all the wives of, of the fathers, the priests. I want to thank them very much for they have been giving, um, you know, a chance that their husbands can become priests, which is not easy, I know. And many other wives rejected uh, that their husbands can be become priests. But um, uh, so I'm very grateful and I'm very thankful to all the, uh, the Tassonat who accepted their husbands to become priests so they, are, so they can serve the whole congregation, not to serve them, only them, but to serve others. I want to thank you very much, Kaman, um, the beautiful son and the daughter of, uh, of Abuna Musa, um, uh, Daniel. And, um, and Simona, Daniela and Simona. Beautiful young people, uh, God bless you. Uh, I know that a lot of other beautiful Taban sons and daughters of all the other fathers, uh, I thank you all for also um, accepting that your dad could become a priest. This is a great thing and get, um, it's a big, big blessing. <coughs> so God bless you all and and be with you, and work with you, and work in you, and work by you. Um, <clears throat> just, just before I leave, I, I need to take a group photo here with Abun and his wife and the family, and with all the rest of the fathers. And then I will leave you alone, so you can end up the mess. Uh, and by the way, uh, I don't know if you notice that this mess, this first mess, has to be prayed only by the, by the, by the new priest. Uh, I don't have to attend this Mass, not because I'm upset from Abuna, but because I have to give him a chance. Because if I am here, he wouldn't, he wouldn't pray the Mass. Because it's, it's not right, and it's not uh, polite, you know, for the priest to say to the people, Ishlil, and, and the bishop is standing there. So it is always the bishop who starts the prayers and blessing people and residing and, 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 and do everything. So that's why I give him a chance. I, I disappear so he can have you know, his full chance to pray the whole mass by himself. And even the other priests, they, they also don't, they don't share with him in saying any words. Uh, so, he, so, uh, so the new abuna can uh, do everything. So that's one thing. By the way, <coughs> the, uh, the end of the 40 days um, is going to be next Thursday. Next Thursday, the 4th of April, is the uh, end of the 40 days. <laughs> By next Thursday, that's the end of the 40 days. And they will be leaving back to Melbourne. And inshallah, on the Saturday, they what? The eighth or the sixth? The sixth. sixth. Saturday the sixth is going to be a special, you know, welcoming uh, celebration at their own churches. I hope you're preparing something there. You better. Don't send them back yet. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, so uh, so I wish them all the best. And um, actually, we're going to pray together, uh, me and all the monks and the fathers our, uh, our uh, joint mass on Wednesday. So on Thursday, they'll be leaving us in peace. And on Saturday, day 6th of April, you will welcome them all at your own churches. <coughs> what else? 
I would like you to enjoy uh, these beautiful days of the Great Lent fast. This, these are the most beautiful days you know, of the whole year. Please make sure you take it serious and, uh, and benefit from this fast. Um, and don't let it go like that without benefiting. Uh, I better stop here. So after the Mass finishes, we're going to keep ringing the bells and we'll make a procession, a beautiful procession around the church for the new priest and you all can take photos with them. I will be back here at church at 1.30. If you are still here in, in, in the monastery, I'll be here 1.30. I will come again and sit with you if you like to come and have a chat. 1.30, okay? So you should have enough time, you know, to have lunch and have, have a cup of tea. And we'll be back here but by 1.30. So how many of you here will be staying behind? How many of you staying behind? Uh, what's about the rest? You're leaving? So how many will be leaving straight after lunch? Straight after lunch? Okay, there's no need then to come. I, I, um, so, okay, just forget it, Bao. So uh, you live in peace, Bao. I wish you all the best. Um, those who are staying behind, um, make sure we are back by 5 o'clock to start the uh, sunset prayer and the Vesper prayer at 5 o'clock. May God bless you and be with you. Uh, I don't want to say live in peace. I will live in peace. Yalla. <coughs>